Let's have a look at the new output feature of Stage Timer. And I'm going to show you with three examples what it can do. First, we're going to start by creating a room. Now we want to set up the outputs. This is the new feature. Uh, you go here to room and output links. We have the viewer output, which is something we are used to, but now we can customize everything. The first thing I do is I'm going to delete the title here. You can see it uses this placeholder text. We don't need this anymore. We're going to copy this text. We're going to delete this element and we're going to unite them both down here. I'm going to have the um, title. I'm going to add a dash and have the speaker. So this will automatically put the current segment and the current speaker down here into this field. Next, I'm going to do is um, make this one a little bit more narrow, the current time, and push it down a bit. Because I want to make space for a nice big logo up here, not the stage summer logo. Let's choose a fictitious logo of our company that is going to pr present this event. And this one I want to have nice and big. And because this is the uh, confidence monitor on the main stage, I'm going to add a um, text here that is going to read uh, main stage in uppercase main stage. And um, I'm going to make it like this, center it here and make this text red for everybody to see. I can push this up a little bit. So this is my main stage display as confidence monitor for this event. I can save it, I can close it. And now as I open this link, as you're used to, I see exactly what I just built together. This was not possible previously. And now you can just move all the elements around. And I wanna show you what you can actually do with that. So the next thing we wanna build is a um, kind of public facing output. So I create a new output. Let's rename this to uh, public so we know what it is. Public. And this is going to be a waiting screen for members of the public to kind of know, you know when the event is starting. So I'm customizing this. I'm going to remove the um, progress bar. I'm going to remove the text. I'm going to push the time down here. And then I'm going to choose a nice background. A background image. I'm going to... Uh, get this nice image of a car because our fictitious company produces cars um, and i'm putting this timer down here and we're going to we're going to add uh, another text that goes um, up at the top and we're going to say event starts in and i want to have the um, press start and we're gonna use this font down here as well to make it in our uh, chosen font for this event. And have the time here. That's it already. That's all I want to do. Uh, I hit save. Um, I'm closing it. And um, I'm can, I can already start the pre-event to see how it looks like. Let's start the pre-event. It's counting down. I go back to the output, um, open, it, open it up. And here you can see um, yeah, how it's counting down. However, uh, I kind of don't like this time format, right? It, it works really well for my internal team, but for the public, I want to have something a bit more descriptive. So what I do is I go in, uh, customize this again, click on this timer, and instead of the room default that I've set, I can overwrite uh, the time format just for this output into something like this. As soon as I save it, it will automatically apply, and now I have my nice countdown, nicely themed, for this event. And the third thing I want to do is a view for, for mobile devices. So let's say my team is running around the event and they, they don't always have the screen with them. So what we're going to do is create a new output. Let's call this phone. And because people always look at their phone in um, portrait mode, we're going to change the aspect ratio from 16 by 9 to, and we already have this default here, uh, phone portrait. And what I also want to do is the enforce aspect ratio. Now I can turn this off and then it will, just like you're used to, stretch to the screen and it will resize everything nicely. But this time I want to enforce this phone landscape mode. I confirm, I want the timer big up here nicely. Let's um, remove the progress bar and 
what I really need for my team is they want to know like what is current and what is next. So I'm going to say, I'm going to uh, add a text a field here. Let's make this nice and big. And this one is going to say current line break. And instead of next title, we say current title. So they know current is pre-event and then next Let's add a line break here as well, is introduction. And we can even say um, the UC placeholder next start, which will automatically say when the next item will start. And because we want to have the time on screen, let's push these a bit down. Uh, we can add a new element, which is the time of day or clock. That one just going to spread at the top, showing us the time. And this is my mobile view. Again, I save it. And as I open this link, I will have it displayed perfectly for mobile devices. So maybe I don't want everybody to have access to this, right? I gave this link to everybody in, a, in an email that went out to the whole team. But in the end, I decided I only want to have a few choice members that actually have access to this information. So what I do is I can set a password for this output. Let's set our secret123 password, I can show it here, uh, secret123, we see the green check mark, it is saved, which means that now everybody will be prompted for a password when they access this, this output. Just put in secret123, click access, and they, we're not going to save it, and they are going to see this, this screen with information they need on their cell phone, and as you're used from stage timer, uh, this is going to be synced real time if people put the phone into their pocket pull it back out it will reconnect and pull the latest information and show it here so this is the new output feature of stage timer it is still experimental so please tell us your suggestions tell us any bugs you find so we can make this the best way to build outputs for your events